Today I'm standing with Dr. Muhammad Haggar, the president of the Cultural Center for Research for Study of African and Arab Studies in Anjamina on the Chinese Bridge in Chad. You can see the beautiful Shari River, which is starting from Bangui in the Central African Republic and ending in Lake Chad, take about 1,200 kilometers to cross this area. This river is a lifeline for Chad and for Central African Republic. I'll try to answer some questions today about Chad, about the history of Chad and the problems of Chad and the source of Chad. While we are looking at the river, and enjoying the scene on the river, I realized that the Arabic language has entered Chad at the end of the 6th century by the Arab tribes who traveled or migrated from Yemen and to Chad, crossing the Red Sea, to Ethiopia, Sudan, South Egypt, South Libya, then they came to Central Chad, and from Central Chad this, they settled there to establish a state called uh, the state of Bani Saif or the Saifiya state. This happened after the collapse of the Dam of Ma'rib in Chib. The Arabic language is one of the main two languages in Chad. The second is the French language. Islam came to Chad at the first Hijri century from North Africa with the colleagues of Uqba ibn Nafi who was conquering Afriqiya, which is Tunisia in the north and sent his colleagues to spread Islam in Chad. Islam came first to a place called Tipisti in the north, far north of Chad. Then from the far north of Chad, it went to Chad itself as a whole, then to east of Nigeria, north of Cameroon, Darfur in Sudan, south of Libya until it reached the areas of the area of Fazan which is now a part of Libya. So from few followers of Aqba ibn Nafi to Tibisti, Central Chad then spread all over the place. Today we need also to talk about the resources, the natural resources which in which Chad has. Chad, if you look at the map in Central Africa, it is 1.8 million square kilometer in Central Africa. It's a landlock, does not have any port on the sea or an ocean. Extremely wealthy of natural resources, but unfortunately, its people one of the poorest nation on earth. The second from the bottom of the uh, list. If we talk about oil, Chad 2003 became one of the members of the oil club because of its vast resources of oil in the country, which is huge. If we talk about natural gas or gas, it's a place present in Kano in a place called Bahr al-Ghazal and an area, different areas, it's huge. The reserve of oil and of gas is something unimaginable for the country of Chad to enjoy, to extract and to import, to, to export. If we talk about minerals, gold also is one of becomes 
extracting gold. It becomes extremely traditional because of the amount of gold in the country. Even people are doing it by the traditional way of extracting gold from the land. It's in the area of Tibesti, Abye, and Batha. Also, it has cobalt, rhodium, iron, steel, and uranium. And if you remember the 1980s war between Chad and Libya, it was because of the wealth of uranium in Chad and how Libya wanted to control an area of 120 square, 120 square, 220 thousand square kilometer in this area. Chad uh, reserve of uranium considered to be the fourth globally. Also from the natural sources, Chad is extremely rich of water. Six rivers, three lakes, and the second largest reservoir of water in the in Africa. Livestock, 72 million cows, 46 million camels, 127 million uh, sheep, 66 6 million uh, goat, like plus other uh, wildlife animals as well. And this is in Chad. And it has the second best most important uh, zoo in Africa, in a place called the Kuma, and say that the zoo of the Kuma in the south of Chad. Also, it has a sand called Atrol sand. They used it in beautification uh, product, as well as salt. We talk about uh, tourism. One of the wonders of Chad is the place called Arshi. There's a huge cave, and inside this cave is a forest or oasis in the middle of the desert. It has uh, crocodiles, and it has a lot of uh, good water in the middle of the desert itself, with a small lake called Wanina. Uh, and been described was by, Mr. by Monsieur Jean-Claude Pisson as one of the most beautiful lakes on the face of Earth. Underneath, if you look also uh, on the top of the highest mountain, the second highest mountain in Chad, in Mokos, there is a depression which you call depression of Natron. And in this is the Tebesti and underneath it there's a volcano, live volcano, throw out colorful water, green, blue and red. And this could be used for treating people. If we talk about agriculture, 75% of the land of Chad is fertile. Even the sand in mean, the desert is very fertile, so you can actually plant in the desert grapes, uh, dates, and wheat. What's the problem facing Chad? The problem facing Chad, it is landlocked, does not have any port on the sea. But now the government is trying to get a uh, railway to go from Anjamina to Port Sudan on the Red Sea, from Anjamina through Cameroon, and from Anjamina through Benin to the Atlantic Ocean. Okay, another problem which is the corruption, huge corruption, huge corruption. The third one is climate change and nearly the uh, drying of Lake Chad. 
The fourth is the presence of the followers of Boko Haram, which is a terrorist organization coming from Nigeria, from the far west. The fourth one is uh, ignorance and very weak civil society sector. My appeal to all of you, to all of us, is come here, young men and women, to discover child. Come here to work and support, educate, advocate for child. And for the businessmen, come here and invest in oil, in gas, in gold, in agriculture, in livestock, in building roads, in building houses, in building infrastructure. Chad needs us and needs all of you. Please, please, please fight the despair that we are living through it and come here to Chad to support the Chadian people. Salaam alaikum.